Hi everyone. Thank you all for coming. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, everyone knows or should know or maybe not, uh, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, and we do a, a proclamation every year to acknowledge uh, October as being the uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. In 2019, we did have um, the Silent Witness Project, and that is a project of people who have passed in Massachusetts due to domestic violence. Um, this year, there were 11, and it, and it, you know, it really came close to home because one of the um, people who passed this year uh, is or was a safe plan. Um, a SafeLink advocate, sorry, SafeLink advocate. And SafeLink is uh, the Massachusetts database uh, for domestic violence shelters, has a hotline, and they also help people when they call the hotline. So it was very close to home as I was putting the project together. Um, and this year, too, I, I read something that really stuck out to me, and it, and it, it was really powerful. And they said, domestic violence is a silent war. And the battlefield is your home, is their home. And that really, like it, it really touched me. And I, and I thought of, wow, how many times haven't, haven't I heard, no one knows, I've never told anybody. This is something that I've been, um, you know, that I've been going through on my own I've never told anybody. Um, and then it also brought me back to a client who I was working with that she was in a domestic violence relationship for 19 years. Um, so she was being abused. Um, it started off verbally, then it became physical. And no one knew, she didn't tell anybody, she didn't tell any of her friends, any of her family. And she was going through this alone by herself. And, and I just, when I read that, I, I thought of her and I'm like, wow, you know, that's, that is so, that is something that doesn't have to happen, right? Like it, there, there could be so many times where, where someone could step in if, if people knew, if they knew to look for the signs, if they knew what was happening. Um, and you know, she, she, she just recently left, um, this relationship about a year and a half ago and she left because the, the abuser started, uh, started abusing the, her children. And that's when she decided that's it. I can't do this any longer. And, um, you know, I, I thought of like, we, you know, they shouldn't have to go through this alone. They shouldn't. It's, it's something that they should have support for, but. In a, in a lot of cases, they don't. They do it on their like in silence, um, and that was something that just like I I read it and I started thinking about like all of my clients and and started thinking about this specific client, um, and I I appreciate you all coming out because this is something coming to to events like this is is helping survivors is knowing being aware um, and just speaking out when you see something asking questions um, so you know I'm, I'm very grateful thank you all for coming um, and I have several different speakers and I wanted to thank Hawk for being here Hawk is healing abuse working for change um, I believe that they have an event coming up soon in Beverly, so I'll let um, Elizabeth talk a little bit more about that. Um, but it is also supporting agencies like Hawk, um, th where you know they they're they're always looking for people to come out, volunteer, um, donate, anything that you can do to help agencies um, in our community to help folks um, who are suffering alone. Um, in a domestic violence relationship. And the next person that's coming up is Elizabeth Nash Wren, and she is from Hawk Healing Abuse Working for Change. I'm gonna do my best to project. I'm not a particularly quiet human, but if you can't hear me, I invite you to come closer because the hope of gathering is that we can share messages and be in space together. 
Um, so I want to start by saying that I feel really fortunate to work. Oh, I'm really short. Okay. Is that better? Okay. So I want to start by saying that I've been lucky to work at Hawk for a number of years and I really feel like it's my professional home. And I've worked in the field of intimate partner violence for years in rape crisis centers and domestic violence centers. And people often say to me, I don't know how you do that work. I don't know how you work with survivors. And we always remind folks, if you work with people, you work with survivors. If you work at 7-Eleven, you work with survivors. If you work in a lunchroom, you work with survivors. If you work with inmates, you work with survivors. No matter where you work, survivors are everywhere. So it's really important that we don't position this issue in a us versus them. We come together to help them. They have problems, we have solutions. The reality is that domestic violence, intimate partner violence, is a public health epidemic that takes all of us collectively. So while Hawk has been doing this for 40 years, we're forever trying to figure out ways to do better to do more, to lower the barriers of access that bring survivors in, right? To make more people be seen that they matter and they belong at agencies like Hawk. Whether you're a man, a woman, non-binary, trans, children, you have a home with us at Hawk. And it's really important that folks know that we're here and it's really important that we come together because you might have integrity with survivors where they're not going to make that reach out to us yet, but you could use your time and your trust with them to kind of, you know, um, extend that olive branch to make it safe, right? A big part of my legacy in this field is helping professionals and other systems to think about what more can you do? And I'm in the space of thinking, we come here in spaces like this every year, but if we're not challenging ourselves to do more, to make ourselves less comfortable, to think about what else can we do, then we're never going to move the needle forward, are we? Right? If we could have on our own devices and individually solved domestic violence, we would have done that by now. And what we know is survivors cannot hold domestic violence alone, but neither can agencies like Hawk, right? Hawk serves 23 cities and towns. We give the image of a very, very mighty crew and you pull up behind the curtain and there's about 30 of us working really, really hard, okay? And we always say to survivors, we don't expect that you can do it alone, but we also know we can't do it alone. We know that public health, that this is a public health epidemic. This is not the fringe family on the edge of your neighborhood, okay? This is a, uh, an epidemic that impacts about one in four women. It impacts about one in two trans individuals, all right? So what we need to no do is universally educate, universally assume that domestic violence exists in our families, in our communities, in our colleges, in our clinics, in our faith institutions, and we have to be talking about it, right? The other thing I'm gonna ask all of you to do in addition to coming here with us today is to really take it as a personal challenge as to what you can do in the coming year to hold your own systems accountable, to use your own power, your own privilege, and your own volume, to not just make survivors feel safe, right? This is something we talk about at Hawk a lot. Survivors don't just need safety. They need quality of life. They need respect. They need joy. They need to feel connected to community. They need to show up and have you say, I believe you, what do you need? Let me help you. I'm here, right? Even if you don't have all the answers, we normalize all the time saying, you're asking great questions, I don't have all the answers, but let's reach out and get the parties together to start finding these answers, right? We have to continuously again and again let survivors know that they are not navigating this path alone, okay? So as we stand here collectively, and we pledge to take on domestic violence as a public health and a community issue, as we pledge to say to survivors, I see you, I hear you, I believe you. I'm also gonna ask that you collectively agree to use your own power and privilege to stand up to disrupt and dismantle all the other systemic oppressions that reinforce and allow domestic violence to thrive, right? These are things like transphobia, racism, right? Pay differential, poverty, lack of affordable housing, lack of access to good health care, lack of access to quality mental health care. So we cannot address these issues as siloed issues. If we're standing up in, in this space, we have to say, 
I'm here for it all, right? And once we start to push ourselves to get in those areas of discomfort, to put yourself in the area to say, but I don't know how to solve that. I don't feel ready to solve that. As long as we're talking about it and understanding we have to push the issue forward, we're already doing better by survivors. So thank you all for being here. There's a multitude of ways that you could join Hawk in helping us and do the work that we do. We truly can't do it alone. We ask that you follow us on social media. We have a benefit concert coming up October 13th, right here at the, uh, in Beverly at the Misslewood. Check out our social media, follow us, find ways that you can show up in such creative ways for survivors to make them feel uh, feel seen, heard, believed, and also to bring joy and quality of life into their lives. Um, I want to thank my leadership. Um, Sarah Stanley and Julie are here. Our intern Cassie's here. It really is a collective that makes us look mighty, and we couldn't do it um, individually. We do it collectively, and we couldn't do it without all of you. So thank you for having us here. Cindy, thank you for hosting this every year, holding us accountable, and reminding us that survivors need all eyes on them, and it's a collective effort. With that in mind, I'm going to invite our survivor speaker up. Kim, if you would join us, thank you so much for speaking. Good afternoon. I come here today as a survivor. During the aftermath of one of the worst days of my life, I met an amazingly bright light that shines on our community. Her name is Cindy Baez and she works for the Beverly Police Department as a domestic violence advocate. From day one, she's been a huge support with great insight and encouragement. Cindy has been helping me for over two and a half years, being someone that I can always reach out to for anything. She's given me resources and experience-based advice and has been at my side at least 20 times at court while facing my abuser. Without the help and genuine compassion that she's provided, I would not be where I am today in my journey. I want to thank Hawk, Cindy, and the City of Beverly for having programs to help others like myself in an especially difficult and confusing time. I'd like to share something I recently wrote that shows how far I've come in my healing process, and these programs is what played a huge part in that. Imagine building with broken bricks constantly trying to construct the perfect house, something safe, strong, beautiful, a place to call home. The pieces cracked and crumbled into piles of dust. Despite the feeling of defeat, after every storm, you still pick them up, stack them again, and rebuild them as you've always done, each time left with something smaller, weaker, and less attractive. You know more storms are coming, but not when or why, so you hurry. You yourself did not break these bricks, but instead you treat them as something irreplaceable because you know what they've been through. They are your bricks and this build, building, house, shelter, call it what you'd like, is yours and yours alone. During the quiet that follows the storm, you get straight to work assembling the bricks that fell. You stop and gaze about, realizing there are just not enough to finish this time. Too many have been reduced to what seems like nothing that could ever be re resurrected. There is so much dust everywhere and suddenly the wind picks up, blowing it off into the vast emptiness that surrounds you. No, you scream, scrambling to sweep up what remains into a pile, salvaging every last particle possible. You sit sobbing, thinking this is the end. You are done and can rebuild no more. As tears fall, they puddle into the mound of powder that sits before you. It begins to mix and you have a sudden moment of introspection. Just when you have given up hope, you begin to understand what you needed to know all along. Despite the inability to prevent the storms or your precious bricks from being damaged, you unaided, even at your weakest, can build something breathtaking. You start one by one making new bricks from the broken down rubble that unintentionally mixed with your sorrows creating something tough, restored, and worthy from what you thought was far too gone and simply lost. With each new block produced, there is a sense of peace and accomplishment flowing through your veins. You fall into a rhythm and soon enough, it is complete and ready to face the next storm yet again. This is very different, very different, as you recognize for the first time, you feel home, at home and whole. Excited for the upcoming weather, you peer out the window waiting to put your revived bricks to the test. Now fully aware of your resilience and determination, you understand 
that you cannot ward off any future onslaught. Instead, you are armed with the insight that you are capable of generating incredible bricks of your own. Perfect they are not, but they are substanti substantially stronger than those with which you started, only increasing their durability with each struggle they endure. You see, these bricks will never be flawless, but instead, they are something far superior. They are unique and belong to you because you chose to continue your fight when you made them and will continue to do so, come what may. Thank you, everybody, and next to speak is the Chief. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming out. Um, first, I do want to thank Cindy. I mean, we're lucky to have a full-time domestic violence advocate for the police department. Not a lot of places have that. Uh, she does incredible work, as you've heard, and, and one of our biggest assets, and we're absolutely thrilled to have her. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to continue our support of the community, uh, the uh, domestic violence initiatives that we're doing. We're very involved in the uh, high-risk task force that comes out, getting involved with those meetings, follow up on cases. We did have some increases in cases during COVID, as a lot of uh, police departments saw. But again, with Cindy's help, we were able to really work uh, to heal or help heal some of those cases, get some prosecutions in and continue to move forward. And again, our, our relationship with Hawk is incredible. They've backed us up whenever needed and worked with Cindy, and it's extremely important to keep doing that. One of the things I do want to talk about is the Silent Witness Project, uh, is it going to go out throughout the city. So it's, down, it's been here today. Uh, we are going to have it at the new police station at some point uh, during this month. That way people on Elliott Street going into Cummings properties and our offices are going to be able to see uh, and read the stories. It's important to read the stories, and I ask the citizens of Beverly, if you have a chance, to come out and actually read the stories of the people that lost their lives. Uh, it, it really brings it home for everyone. Um, we always want to tell people we have many ways to contact us. You can contact Cindy directly at the police station. Call 911 if necessary. You can also text to 911 if you're in a situation you don't want to make a phone call. A simple text to 911 comes directly to the Beverly Police Department and you'll get the help you need. Um, and again, we also have a tip line online so you can do uh, tips through line if you need help. The important thing is if you need help, we're here to help you. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are, you know, it doesn't matter. We're, we're going to help you through that, do it, everything we can for you. Um, again, I just want to thank Cindy, I want to thank Hawk, I want to thank the officers of the department for all the great work they do, and we're going to continue to work as a great partnership and team together. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, wow, I want to thank Cindy uh, and Elizabeth and Kim for your words. Um, there's a lot there, uh, a lot to take. I, I think the, the fact that BevCam is here and that what you've said and shared um, is going to be seen by a lot of Beverly residents can only help. Um, Kim, your, your courage and your determination. Um, Elizabeth, your call to action is incredible. I, I, I really, I'm going to watch it again because you, you're really spot on in the things that each of us can do and need to do. Uh, on so many fronts. Um, so I want to thank all of you. I want to thank Hawk for the work you do every day of the year. I want to thank Cindy for the work you do with us as our domestic violence advocate, uh, Sergeant Costa, the CIU uh, uh, Community Impact Unit, Chief Alasher, and, and all of our department, um, because it's it's life, um, it's life threatening work many times for, well, let me say differently. Lives are at risk every day. Um, and domestic violence is something that, as you said, is everywhere. Um, we as residents in Beverly, if we see something, we've got to say something. If we don't, then somebody's uh, safety, somebody's life may, may, be, uh, may be at risk, may be taken. And we, we see it. We all know people who've lost their lives, who's had their lives taken, taken from them. Uh, it happened again last year in Beverly here. Um, so it, it's troubling and, and it's something that we have to be, um, we have to all be vigilant. We have to all be willing to step up and, and help somebody. I do want to acknowledge, and we've got a lot of our team at City Hall here. Um, 
in, in, in our presence and bearing witness, and that's really important. And I want to especially thank our, we have some elected officials here with us, our Ward 5 City Councilor Kathleen Feldman, our Ward City Councilor at Large, Julie Flowers, our Ward 6 City Councilor Dominic Copeland, uh, in addition to so many of our, our, our team at City Hall are standing right here with us. Um, so there are a lot of important things we do each day, and there's nothing more important than what we're talking about right now. Um, so many lives are impacted and, um, and so many people need our help. So let me just, the words matter here, so I'm going to go ahead and read this uh, domestic violence proclamation. Domestic Violence Awareness Month, whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, gender, and income levels, and whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, directly affecting individuals and society as a whole, here in this community, throughout the United States and the world, and whereas children that grow up in violent homes are believed to be abused and neglected at a rate higher than the national average, and whereas domestic violence costs the nation billions of dollars annually in medical, medical expenses, police and court costs, shelters, foster care, sick leave, absenteeism and non-productivity, and whereas only a coordinated community effort will put a stop to this heinous crime, Whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an excellent opportunity for citizens, for residents, to learn more about preventing domestic violence and to show support for the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy, services, and assistance to victims. Now, therefore, I, Michael P. Cahill, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I urge our residents to work toward improving victim safety and holding offenders accountable for their actions against individual victims and our society as a whole. I declare the City of Beverly a domestic violence free zone and encourage residents to work together to eliminate domestic violence from our community. Let me just say, how do I declare the City of Beverly a domestic violence free zone? I wouldn't have written that if I read it ahead of time closely enough, because the reality is we're not perfect and we can't ensure that people are safe every day in our community. But shining a light on domestic violence like we're doing today, and with the help of our, our uh, local community cable, BevCam, we can try to make sure that more people are thinking and paying attention and looking for those, those times when they may have a family member or a friend or a neighbor or just somebody they've run across on the street who they see is at risk. And so we really need all of us in, in this community to pay attention every day, day in and day out throughout the year. Um, that's the only way that we'll be able to make things better on all fronts and, and particularly on the front of keeping people safe in their daily lives. So thank you. Um, where are we going? Cindy, are you coming back up? Councillor Flowers is coming up as both Councillor and Reverend Flowers at this point. Thank you very much, Mayor. And it is true I come with both those hats on, but I think primarily today I do come uh, as Reverend Flowers um, because I come to both close our time, although not to close our, our reflection, our light shining, our emphasis on Domestic Violence Awareness Month and on what we need to do collectively. We have heard the call from many of our speakers today about what we can do collectively to really continue to shine a light on the issue of domestic violence and to support survivors and to work together to continue to not only address this issue, but as Elizabeth so eloquently said, to address the issues that contribute to domestic violence, systems of oppression and violence woven into the world and society all around us. And that's part of our work. And that's part of what we're called here to do. So although I am here to help us close this particular time, my words by no means close our responsibility and our shared moral call to continue to work together. I want to thank Cindy, as others have, for bringing us all together once again this year and for the work that she does throughout the year. And I want to thank all the speakers here today who have come before me and helped us to reflect and to think together about our shared responsibility. And I especially wanted to thank you, Kim, for your survivor statement and for what you read and for the words that you wrote, the really beautiful words that you wrote, helping us to think about the brokenness of those bricks 
and the work that you yourself and those who have surrounded you with love and care have put into rebuilding with those bricks in a whole new way. But just thank you for being here with us this day. Thank you. So part of my, my work here today is to help us to end with a word of prayer. And I know that all of us gathered here might come with different ways that we might think about prayer and think about how we address the divine or the Holy Spirit that moves in our midst. You may have your own ways of reflecting, calling on that spirit for a blessing, or just being in silence. And so although I am going to speak words of prayer and blessing to close our time, I invite you to come into this time using whatever words you might for that sense of the divine, or just coming in a time of silent reflection and thinking about and reflecting on the work that is ours to share. So let's come into this time together. And I invite you to pray using whatever words you might and silence that you might. Creator of the universe, divine spirit, holy one, by whatever name we might call you, however we might know you, we ask that you would hear the prayer of your people gathered here this day and allow our cries and our hopes to come to you because we cry out to you for all survivors of domestic violence and on their behalf and in solidarity with them wherever they may be. We cry out for all those whom this silent war harms, often in silence, every day. We cry out to you for all who suffer physical, sexual, emotional, and economic violence. We cry out to you for all who have lost lives, health, dignity, safety, hope, innocence to violent hands. We remember and hold before you this day all those who have died as a result of domestic violence and the systems of oppression that uphold it. We ask that your spirit would grant them eternal rest and also grant peace to their family members, their friends, those who are also impacted. And we remember and hold those who are grieving this day. Let your healing presence be upon them. Let your healing presence be with survivors. Help them to be restored to the fullness of life. Sustain and offer strength not only to all survivors, but to all of us as we come together to lean into this call, to live into this call in the work that is ours together. Grant us your strength, unwavering hope, strong commitment, enduring love, courageous hearts and voices, and a persevering will. Help us to continue to do the work each day of not only raising awareness of domestic violence, but coming together to confront it, to uplift survivors, and to be part of a lasting and long-term solution that brings safety and wholeness for all people. Soften and turn the hearts of perpetrators and abusers Help them to understand, too, the systems of oppression into which they live and lean and the damage and violence that has come at their hands and to be changed of it. Help us to hasten the coming of the day when purple ribbons that we wear or purple flags might no longer be necessary. A day when our work to come together has really brought safety and healing and wholeness for us all. Give wise minds, gentle hands, and warm hearts to judges, law enforcement officers, medical providers, caseworkers, clergy, and all those who work and care for survivors of domestic violence and for our community. Open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts that we might never be indifferent 
to this issue or to the need that is all around. Be with us in this time, strengthen our resolve, and help us to continue to work together to build the kind of community of safety, wholeness, justice, equity, and love that we hope to see. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the work that, that you all do, Hawk. Um, and thank you for, for the work that we all will continue to do um, as we think about what could we do for domestic violence survivors and what can we do for our community um, to, to dismantle the, you know, oppression and, and, and hopefully, you know, bring awareness to this silent um, bring awareness to like everything that that all these survivors do domestic violence um, agencies bring awareness to just oppression itself um, so thank you all thank you so much